Hey guys, welcome back to My Colourful Country Life. I can't believe we're already at the end of January. This last month, or should I say the first month of the year, it has gone by way too quick. My kids are now back at school, the summer holidays are over, and we are back to finding a new routine, actually. <laughs> finding a new routine as my daughter has started high school, so it's all brand new for us. Um, so because we've had six weeks of summer holidays here, I don't think that I've actually coloured that much. Also, I have had a few hits and misses with my colouring this month. Uh, can I call them misses? I probably shouldn't call them misses. They worked out okay in the end, I guess. Actually, one one I loved in the end, the other one not so much. So I've, I've got one which I'm just a bit mm, about. Um, yeah, so I've also been living the migraine life this month. I don't know what it is. I do get migraines sometimes. But I seem to be getting a lot of them this month. I don't know if it's the heat or what. But anyway, let's move this out of the way and dive straight All in. All right, so I started off strong at the beginning of this month by finishing a page in Wildergorn by Jamie Courtier. Now, I'm going to have to try and see if I can get this whole page in a frame because this book is massive. I'm going to fold it over and let's see if I can zoom you out a little bit more and try and get the whole page in. Okay, I think that's most of the page. It's a really big book. It's like, look, I have big hands too, I think. But it's like two and a half to three of my hands up. Anyway, so I absolutely loved colouring in this page. The paper in this book is exquisite. I don't think there's any other book, in my opinion, that compares to the quality of this paper. Now, before I started colouring, I did test some supplies um in the paper test page here at the back of the book just to see what mediums the paper could take which is basically everything actually so um here i've tried the ohuhu that's the honolulu alcohol markers we've got the spectrum noir tri blends the tombow jewel brush pens tripless fine liners jelly rolls the ohuhu glitter pens um, Ohuhu Metallics, the Simtap Markers from Artex, and the Artex Metallic Pens as well. And I'll show you on the other side of this page. Here, you can see maybe with that dark green from the Ohuhu, um, a bit of shadowing there. I'll lift it a little bit closer for you and see if you can see that shadowing. So there was a little bit of shadowing there. I wouldn't call it a bleed through, a little bit of a shadow, but I did use these on my page just in some small areas um but i didn't have any bleed through so the areas that i did use them in were for the clothing what i'm going to do i'm just going to zoom you guys back in now that you've seen the whole page and we can look at it a little bit closer okay so hopefully you can see that a bit better now um I haven't tried using the alcohol markers in a bigger area yet. I don't know if that's going to make a difference, but they definitely work well in small areas. So I used it on all the clothing, on all of our little men, and there's some more up the top of the page. So if we take a look at this guy here, and there's two down here as well, but we take a look at this guy, and we flip over. So it is, it is here clothing there's some more clothing down the bottom here but it's here and you can see there's absolutely no bleed through or shadowing i'll show you the whole back of the page and you can see here that none of the products used and i did use so many different products oh this book is so big i keep knocking the um the my phone stand there we go so you can see that nothing that i used bled through now, this I did colour at the very beginning of the month. So I did write down everything I used, but then I forgot what I used it on. So let me see if I can figure it out as we have a look. So I did use Neo Colour 2 to base a lot of areas. Um, like I based all these rocks, the buildings. Um, I think I based the tree as well. All these little red areas um, were with Neo Colours first. I think it was Dark Cadmium Red maybe I used for the the red areas um 
all these red areas too. So all these rocks, these little um, mountains, the buildings, it was all based with Neocolor 2s first. I did some basing as well with the Tombow jewel brush markers. Um, on these things, are they called? I think they're called Dorics. The story's on the other side of the page that I flipped over. Um, so these flying things I based with Tombow markers. I think just on the wings, I can't remember. Then on top of all the basing, I went back in with some Prismacolor pencils just to add a little bit more depth. Now the orange red sparkle you can see over here, so on our little leaves, over here as well, um, down here. Is that shining? Yeah, I think it is. So that is um, the Pentel, Pentel Sparkle Pop pens. And I've also got a little bit of Jelly Roll Metallics here in the gold in here, just to add in a few little details up here as well. And we have the Light Wish Super Golden Markers. So all these sort of silvery golden tones is the Light Wish Super Golden Markers. So it's like a silver with a gold sparkle through it. Use that here and up here as well. And for the ladders up here, I've used uh, Stedler Triplus Fine Liners. I think I only just used the fine liners for the ladders. Um, basically, I just wanted to try lots of different mediums to see how they'd work on the page. I could have just used um, one of the other markers, but I thought I'd chuck them in as well, just to try everything out to see what I liked working with the most. So when I do another page, I know what I want to use for the other pages. Um, so the inner border here is Distress Inks. Now, I just went over the whole outside bit, this whole bit, with the Distress Inks. And then I went back in to the outer side of the border using Tombow Jewel Brush pens for that dark color, the black. And then for the little patterns, I just went over the top with some Prismacolor pencils just to add in some shadows. I think that might be everything I used. Now there is a two part color along up on the channel for this page. So if there is anything I've missed or anything you might spot that you don't know um, what I use for, you can find it on that color along. Now it took me about 10 hours, I think in total to color this entire page. I did think it was gonna take me a lot longer. Um, the basing helped speed the process up a bit, but overall 10 hours is very similar time frame as to what it takes me to color a Kirby double page. Um, so I was rather happy about that as well. Now, if you would like another color along from this book, please let me know. Bonus points if you let me know what page. Actually, I'm thinking of using the same colors that I use on this page to complete the page next to it. Um, if this page feels like a bit of a close up, a zoomed in version of the page that I colored. There are differences, of course, in the stonework, for example, they have a different pattern, um, but it does remind me of a zoomed in close up of the other page. So I think it'll look really good if they match. Um, also, I am thinking of keeping the same border throughout the whole book. Let me know what you guys think. Should I keep it the same? Um, actually, that would be really good for mindless coloring. I could just go in and put the border in on each page with the distress ink and then the, um, the markers. Now, it really took me a while to decide on what to do for the border. Part of me considered leaving it uncolored completely. Um, another part of me wanted the border to match the colors in the page, but then each page would probably end up having a different colored border, and I wasn't sure how I felt about that. I kind of wanted a little bit of consistency. Um, I do think I chose well with the neutral colors, though, so it's going to help um, make the main picture stand out as well, and it's going to look nice and cohesive throughout the book. So, okay, guys, this was Wildergorn by Jamie Courtier. Next up, I have the Colour in Heaven Australia edition. So this edition was brought out in support of our 2019 bushfires and it's been four years since they happened. Each time I drive down to my parents' place, we actually have to drive right through the burnt bush area. Um, and I do like to check out their regrowth, how the bush is regenerating um, and how much is new, how much still looks burnt. It is actually 
really amazing to see what nature can do and how it rebuilds itself. So that being said, that's why I reached for this book. It's been four years and it does bring back a lot of memories. And I'm going to have to zoom out again one second. So the page I chose to colour was uh, Josh Lee's Pray for Australia. I've never actually coloured anything by Josh Lee before. I have seen his work and his illustrations are fantastic. I really do like his style. So um, this page was my almost miss for this month. I salvaged it though and I do love the end result, but I'll take you through the process. So I based everything first Except for the wings, I base everything with alcohol markers. So I used the Ohuhu Honolulu set for everything except for the skin because they didn't have a skin color in that range. So I used my Spectrum Noir Tri Blend instead for the skin. Then I went in and shaded everything with Prismacolor pencils. Now this is where things started to go wrong. The skin just was not looking right at first. Um, I actually put the book aside. I thought I've ruined the page. I'm just going to leave it. It's going to be a forever whip. Um, but I'm very stubborn and I came back to it the next day with fresh eyes and worked out that I could likely salvage it just with adding some extra layers into the skin colours. Um, I don't like having whips either, so I thought um, I'm going to finish this page no matter what and it will be a great lesson at the very least for future pages. Um, so I went on and started basing the other elements and shading them with pencil as well. Now the wings are just prismas. And I used the, is it Deco Art Extreme Glitter over the top? Let me grab it one second. Sorry, it's the Folk Art Extreme Glitter Hologram. I absolutely love this stuff. And I just love the green tint to the glitter. If I bring it up nice and close, hopefully you can see that green come through. It really does match the green that I've used on the rest of the page. I also used um, Wink of Stella on their tears. So her tears as well as the kangaroo and the koala's tears as well. And there's a little bit of white Signo just on the flower here. So I ended up loving the completed page, the completed elements, um, but I didn't want to leave the background white. So I decided to add some soft pastels. Now, I did think about using reds um, for the fire or greens for the background for the bush before it's burnt. Um, but instead, I decided on maybe an ashy color. Um, so ash from the fire. So I started off with grays and I used it just around the bottom here, just around the flames. And I had a little bit of a moment where I thought I ruined the page. Um, so I added in some more ochre color. So I was using the... Artex soft pastels. Um, so I added in some more ochre colors and it still wasn't looking quite right. I was containing the soft pastel to just around the flames on this bottom half. Um, so I decided to go in and do the entire page. I mean, at this stage, I had already thought I'd ruined the page by adding in this background. So in my mind, what was the worst that could happen? Um, and I actually really love the final results. Sometimes I just have to trust the process and just go with the flow and I'm glad I coloured the entire background. I think it suits it really well. I think the colour looks really good and makes the image still pop. Um, and if I had my choice to either leave the background white or have the soft pastel background, I would actually choose the soft pastel background now. So this was almost a miss. It was giving me a hard time, but I absolutely love the end result. So that is Colouring Heavens Australia Edition magazine. Next up, I have Summer Nights by Hannah Carlson. Now, this was another page that gave me some trouble this month, and I'm still not quite sure how I feel about it. Um, the background I absolutely love. I used the Mei Liang paints from Paul Rubens. You can see me colour the background in my review video for those paints as well. So, the background I loved. Now, I had this image in my mind of teal and peach. I absolutely love those colors together. Now, with that in mind, let's talk about the lock first. So, this was a process and a half. Originally, I glued on some gilding flakes. They were quite a bright gold. I only own um, one color of gilding flakes. They were very bright gold. It didn't suit the picture that I had in my mind. 
so I decided to take them off and I did I did stop and think for a second just leave it Karen it's fine leave it and work your way around it and then I thought nah I'm gonna take it off and see what happens um it was a bit of a mission and it was very messy and I'm still finding gold flakes all over my desk um maybe we might use them in rooms of wonder on some of the key pages I think they'd really suit those pages um anyway so I got rid of all that and I actually removed it quite well for most parts um and then I went in with a metallic copper watercolor paint from KJ designed by Karen um which covered it quite well and I thought it would really suit the peach so peach and copper do go really well together now I started coloring the flowers peach and you can kind of still see it on some of them if you look close I think I only colored these three um when I decided I didn't like it so I found the peach to be a little bit too much of a contrast for me so I did go in and erase them and I went back in with purple which I liked much better um however that then made the copper stand out so much just stood out like a sore thumb um and I left that to the end because I thought just trust the process Karen you never know it might all tie in very nicely in the end and even with the the wood look I was trying to match that with a warmth enough color so it would match the copper but obviously I didn't leave it copper um this poor lock has taken so many different layers it is starting to look a little bit lumpy now, but I did go over it with a metallic jelly roll. Um, it isn't shiny like my metallic jelly rolls normally are. It's kind of a matte finish. From a distance, it looks okay. I just don't look close up. <laughs> but I think it suits the page a lot better than the copper did. So I am glad I went over it. It sort of um, muted the tone a little bit and made it match. I really should have used the... Um, what was that? Black gold... Is it a black gold or a black silver that came in that paint set that I got from Lightwish for the Happy New Year gift box? That would have been the perfect color, I think, for the center. But hindsight is 2020. I then decided to use a purple jelly roll glaze for all the dots, these little circle patterns, and also the stars. I'm not sure it was the best choice for the stars and the big circles. I do like it for the little dots, though. I think that looks really good. Um, I just I just couldn't go back in and change any more of it. Um, this poor paper has just been through so much. I just couldn't go through and change them again. Um, also, there's some Jelly Roll Metallic on the flowers. Now, I do think they probably would have looked better purple, um, but I was, I was over this page by that stage. And again... The paper had taken so much and it actually took it really well but I just didn't have it in me to go over and fix something else on the page. Um, so the bees I love. The bees I think are really cute. I use some Tully Art paint pens on them um, and there's some extreme glitter. Again the Folk Art extreme glitter. This one here on the wings. Now I will lift that up. So you can see that I also used the Imagine Crafts Sheer Shimmer Spray on the background as well. Now, I did have an incident with the Tuli Art paint pens just down here. Um, it dripped. <laughs> so and I, I actually scraped it off as much as I could, went over with the paint again and sprayed a little bit more of the um, Imagine Crafts Sheer, Sheer Shimmer Spritz, is that what it's called? Hang on got an empty here because I need to order another one it's empty sheer shimmer spritz and sparkle so that's what I used I went in and sprayed again just to sort of cover that so it didn't stand out too much you can notice it if you're looking for it and I also managed to get some of the toy art paint pen on this page too but I can probably scratch that off when I come to color that page that I'm not so much worried about but yeah this page was it felt like a lot of dramas so I do think I like the end result. I think I might need to iron it and it might look a little bit better as well. I do think I like the end result, maybe, but I'm just kind of sick of seeing this page by now. So I think I just need to take a break from looking at it and have another look with fresh eyes and maybe I can enjoy it a little bit more. I did notice that both this page um, and the last one, the from the Colour in Heaven um, Australia edition, the, the two pages that gave me grief this month both were colored when I wasn't really in a coloring mood 
Um, I did feel like putting colour to paper, but I just, I was really tired. Like I said, I've had migraines on and off most of the month. And it was school holidays, so entertaining children. Um, maybe I need to invest in some easy, simple mandala books or something that I can colour just when I need to do something. Um, but I'm glad it's finished. It is a completed page. And I'm going to iron it and put it away. And hopefully the next time I look at it, I will love it. I do love the colour scheme that I use in the end. And I love the background. I love my bees. So that is Summer Nights by Hannah Carlson. Okay, so next up we have Secret Garden by Joanna Basford. And I actually coloured in three different Joanna Basford books this month. And I do love how all of those pages have turned out. So this is Secret Garden, the 10th anniversary edition. And this is the page I decided to colour. So this book was gifted to me by Lawrence King, who were Joanna's publishers for this book. And the gift also included some Stedler Design Journey pencils, uh, which is what I used to colour this page. Now, there is a video of me unboxing the gift and colouring this page if you want to see which pencils I use for the combinations. Um, actually, while we're on the topic of these pencils, I did mention in that video that, so Design Journey pencils are new to me. I haven't owned them. I've never seen them. Um, I have heard of them, but I hadn't used them, seen them be used, etc. So when I unboxed the pencils, I couldn't really see if there was a name or number on the box. And I did mention that I wasn't sure if these numbers here um, had anything to do with the colour of the actual pencil. Um, there are no other visible colour numbers on these pencils or colour names. Um, and I can confirm for anyone who, like me, was unsure that the numbers um, did correlate to the colour of the pencil, they actually do. So they are, in fact, numbered. And it's the number after the dash here that correlates to the colour of the pencil. So it's 146C and then dash and then the pencil number for the colour. So that was very helpful to work out. So I was actually impressed with these light uh, pastel combos that I came up with. Now, if you have watched the video, you'll have seen how I come up with the color combos. I do get asked that quite a bit and you can see the process in action on that video for anyone who was curious. Um, now, I did also add in this big gold circle. So that is just Jelly Roll Metallic in Gold and it worked really well to cover up the sentence that Joanna had written on the page. Um, I didn't want to add in a background and I didn't like the writing. See how we put the writing here? I didn't like seeing the writing, so um, it worked really well to cover that up. So also in that video, I did mention doing a colour along in this book. Now, I'm thinking of the pull-out section in the back here. Now, this um, pull-out section is specific to this edition, the anniversary edition, so it's not in um, the usual secret garden. Now, if you do want to colour along, let me know. Um, let me know in the comments down below and just let me know whether you'd prefer the houses or the flowers. Yeah, so this is a flowers double page and on the other side we have the sort of fairy toadstool houses. So if you are interested, let me know down below. Just houses or flowers. So that was Secret Garden, the 10th Anniversary Edition by Joanna Basford. All right, so next up we have another Joanna Basford book. This is Magical Jungle. Um, so this double page I did this month was a buddy colour with my lovely friend Amy over on Instagram. Now this page was meant for December, but I am a tad slow, especially around this time of the year. Um, but we got there in January. I will pop Amy's picture up on the screen now. I'm also going to link Amy's Instagram down below in the description for you all to go check out her page as well. And I love the bright, bold colours Amy used on her page. It almost looks like a painting to me. It's so pretty. Please go check out Amy's Instagram. It's going to be linked in the description box down below. Okay, so this double page was an absolute labour of love for me. Um, it took forever to complete. But it was well worth it because I enjoyed every single minute of watching this page come together. It may be my favourite page for this month. Maybe. <laughs> so the right side of the page here, I coloured it on my own. I did post up a whip um, and I was asked if it would be a colour along. So I did do the next side as a colour along. So you can find a video of this page up on the channel as well. Now, one of the reasons 
actually the main reason it took so long is because everything was layered i didn't do any straight blends on this page at all i layered all my pencils i do love the look you can achieve from layering i feel like it can be more realistic um but honestly, I don't often have the patience for it. I do really enjoy just smushing on my prismas onto a page. Um, but I love this effect. And the flowers were all coloured with Prismacolor pencils. Now for the inside of some of these flowers here. And around the edges of our butterflies. And down here as well. I used uh, Pentel Sparkle Pop in silver, Pentel Sparkle Pop in silver, and there is a small amount of a white Signo for detailing on the flowers as well. The bokeh background was completed using Inktense pencils. I used two layers all over, and in some areas I did use three, um, just to get that beautiful smooth gradient. So part two of the color along for this page does focus on how I did the background. So part one is the flowers, part two is the background. If anyone is interested in any more intense color alongs or tutorials, let me know. It was so much quicker to use them on this page um, than my original idea of doing it with prismas and it did save me from having to order some new prismas as well. I do have the 100 set of intense as I bought the new colors. Um, but I think I've only used them maybe twice since the new colours were released. So it was about time I dusted them off and um, gave them a good old go. So that was really fun to colour. And I've also got the um, Sheer Shimmer Spritz in Sparkle from Imagine Crafts in the background. I'll lift it up so you can see, hopefully, that sparkle. It is a very fine spray. hopefully you can see see that shimmer all right so that was magical jungle by joanna basford this is fast becoming one of my favorite books a lot of my favorite joanna coloring pages are in this book um so yep joanna basford's magical jungle Okay, now we begin the first of our full book colour alongs for the month, and this is Joanna Bassford's Rooms of Wonder. So anyone who isn't aware, um, I am colouring this entire book as colour alongs, colouring tutorials. There is a playlist up on my channel for this particular book, if you want to go and check out any of the past colourings that we've completed. Um, so I only coloured one page in this book this month. Now, I don't know if the colour along for this page is up yet. Um, this video may end up being up first. My internet is playing up. Um, but if it isn't yet up, it will be very soon. The joys of living in rural Australia. Um, so the page I coloured was the birthday cake. Now, this is one of my favourite pages this month. And I almost didn't colour it. I had previously marked a few different pages but as I was flipping through the book this one really stood out to me and I could picture in my mind what I wanted it to look like so um, what I was picturing was a rainbow swirl cake um, but in pastel colors so I'll see if I can find an inspo photo and I'm going to pop it up here and now I feel like baking cupcakes fun fact I actually used to make birthday cakes and I'll see if I can find some um, pics from some of my old creations and I'll pop them up here just for you to have a look at um, so this page is mostly Prismacolor pencils I did use the Pentel um, Milky Pop and Solar Pop pens um, for the sprinkles and I've just dotted them over with the silver Pentel dual metallic pen as well so I'll lift that up try and capture all that shiny goodness I also used um, Jelly Roll Metallics here on the presents for the ribbons and the bows. And I just chose pens that were in a similar color family as well. So I tried to keep it to just the, the pink, the blue, the green, the yellow and the purple colors. Now I also used some Wink of Stella on the streamers here. Um, now the reason I did that was mostly because I found the pastel pink to be a little too bright and I want to lighten the colors a little bit so I've just added the Winker Stella in clear on the top which hopefully you can see that there there's a little bit of white Signo just on the the glasses there as well 
Um, and I didn't even consider doing a background on this page. I'm getting so good at leaving negative space alone without feeling like I need to fill it all up. Um, and I don't think the page needs a background. I think it just pops as it is on its own. So I'm pretty happy with how this page turned out. I have done quite a lot of pastel colours in this book, I noticed as well. Um, so I'm not sure what page will be completed for February, but this is the one we got done in January for Rooms of Wonder by Joanna Vassford. Okay, and last but clearly not least is our other full book, Colour Along, which is Mythic World by Kirby Roseanne's. I absolutely enjoyed colouring this page so much this month and I really love how it's turned out. And I've actually just noticed that my lovely friends over at LOM Art, who are Kirby's publishers, have reshared this up on their Instagram as well. Um, which was very kind of them. So I flipped past this page a few times. I've always pictured it with reds. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is use more warm, rich reds and earthy tones on this opposite page. So that helped influence my decision to add more cool tones into this page with the blues and purples. So the pages are going to be um, in opposing tones, but still look cohesive next to each other not that it really matters what they look like next to each other they are single pages but I just thought oh, I'm going to do this one in reds I don't want to color two in red so I'm going to do this one in blues and purples and this one might be some red earthy, earthy tone so this one we may color in February I'm not quite sure just yet um I do love how his skin turned out and I will be doing a skin combo series as well that is still to come okay so what did I use this page is basically, it's basically all Prismacolor pencils. Yeah, it's Prismacolor pencils for pretty much everything. Um, I did outline the clouds with a white Posca, I think. I don't think I used Signa. I think it was a white Posca. Um, and then I went over the lines with stickles. And I'll lift it up so you can see. Hopefully you can see the stickles on those clouds. And there are also some stickles down here in the little barrels of treasure and jewel and and gold got a little bit of a jelly roll as well on the jewelry um, and also the jewelry in the barrels as well so that's in blue we've got a little bit of jelly roll gold as well where is that okay so in the middle of these little shapes we have jelly roll gold and some sort of accents on the barrels as well look at that shine can you see that getting distracted by shiny things um so this is mostly a pencil page i think that's it a little bit of jelly roll a little bit of stickles mostly pencils bit of white Posca yeah that's it pretty much mostly pencils it's been a while since I've done like a full pencil page I think um so of course like every page in this book this is a full book color along so every page is up on the channel um as a color along and it nearly is every page I've been going through um my book collection and working out like which books I've colored in the most which ones I've colored in the least um what percentage I've still got left to complete and this one is almost done. We are nearly at the finish line. All right, so that is Mythic World by Kirby Rosams. So that is all I have to show you for the month of January. Looking back, I actually got a lot more done than I actually thought. Um, along with beginning our Polychromos Color Combo Series 2 in January, I'm pretty impressed with what I achieved this month. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below which page was your favorite this month, and I will talk to you all very soon. Happy coloring and bye for now.